Hello everyone, in this video I'll show you how I integrate the autocomplete from the Material UI component library with React Hook Form. If you can integrate this component, I think you're going to be able to integrate any control React component with React Hook Form. So let's get started. Now for our isolated environment, this time we're going to try Code Sandbox with everything set up for us. We have React Hook Form already installed the Material UI component library, and some code from the documentation of the autocomplete combo box. Let's take a look at what we have in the boilerplate code that I have prepared. We have a form that really does nothing yet. It will just expect to have two fields in the end, which are going to be two strings. Then we have the state that is used to control the autocomplete. So we notice that we have two states, one for what we type inside the field and one for the value that is selected at the end of the interaction. Now, for our purposes, we won't control the input value, so we can get rid of that immediately. We will allow users to type in whatever they want. And when the autocomplete decides to pick a specific value, that's the thing that will be held into state. And in the end, it will be sent to the server. The next thing that we need to take care of is this option array. Usually when we work with forms and we submit data to the server, we work with some sort of unique identifiers, not with strings. So let's transform this string array into an object array that also holds some sort of ID key. Now our value needs to hold only the ID of the selected option. So let's go ahead and do that. But our autocomplete will have to keep either the entire object or some sort of reference so that it knows what to display on the screen. Because we don't want to show the ID here, we want to show the label. So in order to do that, we'll send over the entire object, not just the ID. And in order to send the entire object, we need to figure out what object corresponds to this specified ID. So if we take the options and we search inside them, we can attempt to return the option whose ID matches the value that we hold into our state. Now we need to change the onChange handler and this will no longer receive a string or null. Actually, TypeScript helps us out here. It tells us that we receive an object with a, an ID and a label. So if we receive an object that is not null, we're going to call the change handler with the ID of the selected uh, item or with null if that is not available. So let's see if this works. It seems to be working fine. We are able to, oh, we actually have an error. This happens because it is possible that our value is either undefined or null, which we set here, or when we don't find an option in the array. So if a value exists, we try to find the selected item. If we don't find an item, we default to null. And if there is no value, we also default to null. And now we no longer have the issue with a component changing from an uncontrolled to a controlled component or vice versa. There's actually an additional thing that we need to take care of. And that is what happens if we don't have a label, we have something else in our options. Maybe we have name. As we can see, we actually receive an error if label is missing. Now we can leave label on and enforce this for all our options, or we can use another property from the autocomplete component. Get option label will allow us to specify what key we want to use in order to produce the displayed label onto the screen. Both options work. However, it's probably safe to have this available just in case your data doesn't match the expectations of the autocomplete component. And now we're ready to integrate React Hook Form with our autocomplete. And we're going to use the controller and control object from React Hook Form to achieve that. I'll add the basic controller onto the screen.
the controller must take a name for the field that we want to use and this is type safe if we defined the value that the form accepts here our field will contain the value and the onChange that are necessary to move the state from our component into the Yahoo form. So we can go ahead and copy over the entire autocomplete and replace the dummy input. And all we need to do now is make sure that we hook the onChange instead of our local state and things should just work now now our value at the top doesn't update because that's no longer linked to the autocomplete however it seems to work just fine and when we press submit the information the id of the autocomplete gets passed up to the react form and we're ready to send it to the server Let's clean up the code a little bit. Let's remove the value that we no longer need. And let's actually add whatever value is in our car maker that we're using, like so. So now we should be able to see something very similar to the original debug message, but coming from the React hook form internal state. Now we still have to work on error handling and focusing the field when it has errors. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, notice that we're rendering a text field input for the autocomplete combo box. So we can just go ahead and set the input ref of that text field to whatever we get from our Yahoo form field. And in order to show errors, we have available field state, which exposes an error. And for simplicity's sake, let's just add a red text message if we get an error on this field. And in order to show a required message, we can just set the rules of the controller to have the key required and a required message when the validation fails. And if we go ahead and submit, we see the error and we also get the focus onto our input. But what happens if we want to have two autocomplete components on the same form and maybe have them have different input data? It would be quite troublesome to copy paste over all this boilerplate code in order to achieve that. So let's go ahead and create a reusable component that will allow us to pass in the options of the autocomplete and then handle everything internally for us. In order to do that, I'll just create a new component here. I'll namespace my React form fields with RHF and then I'll say autocomplete field. I can go ahead and copy over everything I have, starting from the controller. And it looks like we get some syntax errors, which can be easily solved by adding props to this reusable field. First is going to be controller, which I'll leave as any for now, because we're going to work on that in a bit. We also want to allow multiple fields with different names to be used by this React uh, component. So I'll leave that as a string for now. And also the options. Options shouldn't be global, so I'll move those inside the component for now. But we'll also require options here. And this is the part where we're starting to get a little bit advanced with TypeScript. We would like our options to be of a very permissive type as long as they have an ID and a label. Now, in order to do that, we can use a generic. So O, the options, extends any item that has an ID and a label. And now we'll have to copy over our generic in front of our component, like so, and pass this to our type definition. Now we can spread the props and replace our static name with the dynamic value. 
we can clean up the rules because we're probably going to use some sort of schema validation for our forms in the future. We need to make our options an array in order to be able to use array methods on them. And we are expected to send in an array of options, not just one, the way I define it here. And we should be good to go. So if I place my component on the form and pass over the control and the name, as well as the options, we should be back where we started. And things seem to be working just fine. Let me duplicate this. And now we have two independent reusable autocompletes. But there's something not right with the way we're using the control and name here. We can say bananas here and that actually won't complain, even though we know for sure that when we have a car maker and a car model for this particular form. Now, in the next section, we're going to make our usable component enforce this type safety for us. And this is going to be a little bit of complicated TypeScript, but sometimes it's worth the effort. We're going to add another generic here, which will extend the capabilities of our control property. Let's take a look first at how control is defined here. So we see that our control is of a specific type coming from Yahoo form, and then it gets this object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add our control type from Yahoo form, and then I'm going to attempt to pass over yet another generic coming from our interface. And this generic will extend whatever control is extended. So this is field values, again, coming from React hook form. Now, we have to pass over this again as one of those types, like so. And now we notice that the name is not supposed to be a string, it's supposed to be something called path of field. So our name is no longer a string, it is a path, and you guessed it, path is also a type defined in Yahoo form. So we basically passed over or copied over some of the capabilities of our controller, of the Yahoo form controller, into our usable field. Now, if we scroll down, we're going to see that car model, model was typo, had a typo. Now we can see that the car model has a typo because TypeScript cannot find the string in the form fields that we defined here. Now, of course, this ties in nicely with schemas, but we're going to have a different video for that. So let's go ahead and see if we get autocomplete. And there we have it. We actually have autocomplete ready for us. So that's it, folks. That's how we can create a usable autocomplete component. That's how we actually can create any control component wrapped with a controller with React form. So I can just go over and copy this into a different file and we're good to go. And there we go. We have a much cleaner interface. We have type safety. We're not able to type in a name that doesn't exist in our form. And we can actually have multiple forms using this and they will all work just fine. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried a different format this time. So let me know in the comment section below if this format works better for you compared to the previous ones. Remember to like and subscribe and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.